哦，依照 Martin's licensed marriage family therapist, couple therapist. I want to talk to you about ADHD and freedom, and how to be a consultant to your ADHD partner that has a hard time managing their free wheels. Um, so I was listening to the training call、um, by Dr. Ari Tuckerman on time management and ADHD, and he mentioned how ADHD clients have a hard time、um, being free in managing their time. And that makes me think about a dialogue between my father and my child that with ADHD. So my child with ADHD says to Grandpa, "Well, I would like to be free, and what that means to me is I gotta do whatever I wanna do anytime I wanna do it."、Um, that sounds about right for eight year old.、Um, their definition of freedom. And、um, my father said, "Hmm, that's a very interesting point, grandson. And I have a difference." So I think if you can do whatever that you do not want to do at the time you do not want to do that thing, that is freedom. I was like, oh, my father is so wise. And then later I reflect on that and I I improve that definition of freedom. I think of freedom as the capacity to self activate. So you can turn from I don't want to, to I want to. It's not that I have to. That's a totally different concept. I don't want to, to I want to. How do I bring the gap? How can I bridge the gap, and that I can do it on my own without relying on the external stimulation or other people's、um, comments or prompts or、um, their pressure. That is self activation. Um, and this process of self motivating and get you to go from I don't want to to I want to, and at any any given moment, it is powerful, and that is freedom to me. So, stop, you know, yapping, and how that play in the ADHD affected relationship, and how is that relating to you, the partner of someone with ADHD? So, I think, as a partner. That we can be the consultant to our partner with ADHD.、Um, I can give you an example of my child with ADHD. How can I? How I、um, cultivate this capacity for them to self-activate? So my child with ADHD, like many people with ADHD, has a hard time、uh, get themselves activated in the morning.、Um, it shows us they are sitting on the toilet seat. Uh, one hand holding the toothbrush, the other hand holding a towel, hand towel, and just can't get <laughs> the routine started in the morning. So we tried various things: right? cold water, they don't like it,、um, music, and whatever.、Um, we we tried a whole, whole bunch of things, and then we realized what's really helping is、uh, to give them a bullet of child、uh, omega three fish oil.、Um, I'm not here to promote any products, and there's no proof. That omega three fish oil will drastically improve ADHD symptoms, but somehow this supplement just really give them the sensory input that's needed for them to get started, and they will come search for the bullet and eat it and feel content in that moment. This is the beginning of my day, and I can go do what I need to do. No, it's not saying that it, it it changed the chemical in their brain, but I think there's a cue. That's a cue for them. They relay that to okay, brush my teeth and wash my face and get the day started. After I take my omega three fish oil bullet. Um, so that's one example how I support them to find their way to self motivate and self activate. But then I'm a mother. Right, I'm a mother to my child. So my relationship with my child is different from. You and your partner, which is ideally, if you want an equal relationship, you don't want to do that. But how can you be a consultant to your partner with ADHD? And here's my tips to you. I have secrets. I have been a mental health consultant for many years,、uh, for five years in childcare centers in San Francisco Chinatown. I provide consultation to parents,、um, to teachers and staff, sometimes principals of school. Um, to help them to deal with children's、uh, behavior issues. So what I learned as a consultant is, 
you do not want to work harder than your client. Never, nunca. So you want to motivate them to build their capacity to improve whatever that's needed. So I will break it down to three secrets to you. Are you ready? Are you ready for those billion dollar answers to your question? How to motivate my partner with ADHD to do the things they want to do, they don't want to do, they know how, but they somehow they can't do it, right? Okay, so number one is you want to figure out what is their candy or candies. It could be real candy, it could be have a sweet tooth, um, it could be, depends on their love language, let's say. Let's review the love language. Physical touch, right? If you know physical touch is a love language, you want to explore, you want to clarify what kind of physical touch. Is it a gentle touch on the shoulder to get them activated? Or is it a touch on the hand? Um, is it um, a firm hug? Um, is it a rub on the hair? Whatever the touch that works for them, it really depends on their nervous system. You want to inquire and be curious. Um, so that's the number one. Number two, physical touch. And you know the next one, quality time. What does it mean, quality time? You want to explore with them. Does it mean you sit down together and watch TV and just zoom out? Or watch a movie and discuss what's going on in the movie? Or take a walk, have long conversations? Or does it mean you cuddle together? That could be a quality time and physical touch, right? So you want to be curious and know what is your partner's jam? What's their candy? Um, the next love language you can think about, gifts, right? And you want to ask, what is the gift that really tickles your heart? Right? That reminds you um, your love for them, your support for them, um, and doesn't trigger that part of them that feels shameful. So if you say, well, my partner with ADHD need a clock, need a timer, I'm going to give them a smartwatch that beep beep and help to remind them. That's a nice thought. But explore with your partner, how do they feel about this gift? Does it come with any other connotation, any judgment they perceive that you're giving them, right? So you wanted to be curious and again, things that tickle their heart. The next one, words of affirmation. Most ADHD partners or adult with ADHD that I know, um, words of affirmation is one of their love language. Right? So there are a lot of, um, if they were not diagnosed and diagnosed and being um, perceived and blamed as being slow or lazy, um, not motivated, not trying hard enough, or stupid. So they really can use, their young parts can really use that words of affirmation. Whenever you see that they're making an effort, even though it's not perfect, give that candy to them, that positive reinforcement that will go a long way. Okay? Um, the next one, act of service. <laughs> a lot of the partners of the ADHD clients I have, their love language is act of service. That explains why they do so much, right? To make up for the gap that the ADHD partner cannot um, complete. And well, we tend to give what we want and in some way. So they actually expect the act of service back from their partner a lot of times. Um, and when their ADHD partner cannot meet their standard um, of act of service, they tend to get feel hurt and frustrated and resentful. So we talk about more of that in other videos before. Um, the last, but the, the, the last one, but the not the only one, the, you know, there could be more, is sex. Yes, sex can be candy. Um, you, you may say, well, yeah, are you encouraging me to um, sell my sexuality, you know, trade that for other benefits, uh, like my partner does things for me that doesn't sound like a people pro situation. <laughs> Well, not if you're consent to it, not if that tickles your heart and that tickles their heart and that you both agree to it. As long as you bring it to consciousness and you negotiate and that benefit both of you, why not? So there's a saying called love your neighbors like thyself, 
right? So that's why we tend to give people the love language we want to receive. Well, I would like to add to that: love your neighbor like thyself in the way they want you to love them. So think about that. So that's the first one. You find out. You do some inquiry. What is your partner with ADHD? Their candy, their candies.、Um, two is、um, where are you needed as a consultant? That's very important. That whenever you contract with a client, right, you always want to find out what where do I need it? Where am I needed? Right. You don't want to give anything that's already in place and that's not necessary, redundant. That's not efficient. Right. Um. So it's better to get your partner with ADHD to identify this. Where am I needed for you? Um. To in your self-activating, self-motivation process, can I be of、uh, service and support? So they may need help with that. They may need to talk to a professional, a coach, or therapist to figure it out. Um.、Uh, what are their strong suits? What are not? What are the things that can be aided by medication,、um, CBT, ACT,、uh, motivation, interviewing from the therapist or or coach? But where are they area they need some external support from you, like a loving support and reminders? And then, a lot of my clients with ADHD have a hard time self defining to really identify the needs and the wants. And know the difference, so that's when professionals come in to help them、um, to get to the essence of their needs and their wants, and how to get their needs and wants fulfilled by their partner. And so now you have this. I know what is their candy, which is the reward. I know where am I needed in this process. The next question is for you: Are you willing to give it to them? Whatever they need and want, and their candy, are you willing? And a lot of my clients that are in relationship with an ADHD、uh, partner have a hard time with that. They will say, "Well, I never got all the positive reinforcement myself. Why am I giving it to them? For all the years, the hard work I've been doing, overcompensating, overfunctioning,、um, I feel resentful. I don't have room to give. I understand. I hear you." Um, and that is when I'm coming in as a consultant to the consultant to identify what are your resources you have. Do you have a therapist? Do you have a support group? Do you have friends that support you? Do you have self care practices? Do you have love for your partner? How much love do you have? What is your goal as a partner? Do you want to be someone that's generous,、um, that's loving, that's patient? Or do you want to hold grudges? Do you want what kind of relationship do you want?、Um, do you want to improve your relationship, or do you want to sit and wait for other people to change everything the way you want them to? Then you will give a little bit、um, and have some trust and faith. It's a good question, right? It's a good question to think about.、Um, it's easier to rely on other people to change. To think about other people can be better. It's a lot harder to look within ourselves. So, and you know that with ADHD,、um, inconsistency is expected. So,、um, if you expect your partner with ADHD to consistently show up and behave the way they want to be, the way you want to be, you will be waiting for a long time, and you might be frustrated and disappointed, and feeling despair again. So what's stopping you? Well, so far, let me review the three secrets I have: find your partner's candy, and where are you needed? Then give it to them without reservation, not because you want to change them.、Uh, Keep pro quo. I do this for you, so you do that for me. But more from a place of. I want to live up to my own standard. I want to be this kind of person and partner. This regarding what you do, I did all I could, and if at some point I did too much and I re- regret it, I decided it's too much. I I won't want to do it. I don't want to put in more energy in this relationship anymore. By need by no means leave. But did you give all you have? Did you try your best? And are you comfortable with giving it all and taking that risk? 
Well, until next time, we'll come back to the distrust. I put it on hold for next week. See you next week, my friends.